Bet you guys are all wondering which one of us is the cop. <laughs> I'll return the uniform after this, Tyler. Okay. So, Tyler Auk. Dealing with Tyler Auk again. Nothing but a troublemaker. Nothing but a drug user and a thief. This kid is never going to amount to anything. Prison or death. That's where he's headed. Prison or death. Cops have nothing better to do than to harass me. Sick of these guys making my life hell. They're good for nothing, rotten people. I have bad luck. Just leave me alone. You have no clue what I've been through in my life. And so goes the stereotypes between criminal drug users and law enforcement officers. I stated in my bio, I started with the Bismarck Police Department in 1988, 30 years ago. And I worked in the patrol section, investigation section. I was on the SWAT team for 15 years. And I was a firearms instructor, a defensive tactics instructor, PIO, public information officer, just among many things that I did at, well, uh, during my career at the police department. I've been involved in hundreds and hundreds of arrests like any officer that's worked that long. And we cannot begin to remember every name of individuals that we've arrested. But some of those names, you'll never forget. And for me, Tyler Auk was one of those names I would never forget. Tyler Auk, a fighter, a thief, a drug user, and a foe to society. I progressed through a successful law enforcement career, being promoted to sergeant, lieutenant, deputy chief, eventually chief. A lot of different things I did amongst the, within that police department. And Tyler, well, I never gave the thought of Tyler Elk another thought throughout my career. But I was sure of one thing. I was sure that he was probably on that path of destruction, a path to prison or death. Drugs have had a significant impact, a profound impact on my career, both professionally and personally. Other than what cops see in any given career, Individuals with drugs and alcohol destroying their lives, dying, destroying their families' lives. It personally affected me in 2003 with the worst incident of my career. August 2nd, 2003, 30 years ago, uh, 15 years ago, but I remember it just like it happened yesterday. I was on the SWAT team. We entered a mobile home serving a search warrant for drugs and an arrest warrant for the two armed, barricaded individuals inside. When we entered that mobile home, we went, three of us went down the hallway. I was the third in line. And the subjects in the back bedroom opened fire on us through the sheetrock and through the doors. The first officer got shot in the leg. Down he went, crawling himself out on his belly. Second officer gets shot in the chest. Third officer back in the front room gets shot in the back. But luckily, that second officer had his ballistic vest that saved his life, stopped the bullet. That officer in that front bedroom was standing at an angle, the bullet came through the wall, hit, went through his nylon cuff case in the small of his back, ripped and shredded his leather belt, and the bullet exited out and ricocheted, did not enter his body. That ended up in a 13-hour standoff. And ultimately, I was forced to shoot and kill one of those individuals. Now, this isn't TV. He wasn't getting back up. And that is something that I've had to live with for the... For, the, for my entire life since that happened. Although I saved lives, it's not fun to have to live with that. So drugs and alcohol have had a significant impact in my life. I am a person in long-term recovery. The de disease of addiction had its grasps around my throat, slowly strangling me for over 22 years. During this time, I damaged relationships, lied, cheated, and stole to feed my habit. I remember my first time I ever used alcohol or drugs. I remember like it was yesterday. You know, I, 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 was, I was dared to drink a bottle of vodka without taking a breath, so I did it. And I fell off the chair and hit the dirty floor in that trailer house, and I laid there. And I felt like Superman. I just couldn't get off the ground. And from that moment on, I, I was addicted to everything that I did. 
I had trauma that I was covering up, and that was just that was just something that made it all a little bit better. At the age of 16, I got my first DUI. Um, later on that year, I was drinking with some older people, and we were down by the river, and, and there Superman was, laying on the ground, I couldn't get up. And I got raped by an older lady, and, and that hurt my heart. That, 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 that made that hole inside of me that I had to add more drugs and alcohol on top of to cover that up. And at the age of 17, I was waking up in the morning, and I was shaking, and I didn't know why. It was because I needed drugs and alcohol. So I started robbing places. I started stealing things. Um, I had a lengthy criminal record by that time, um, but, but it really progressed at this time. And you know, the Bismarck Police Department was hot on my tail. And I remember the name Dan Donlin. You know, his name came up a lot from attorneys and, and, and police reports and different things like that in the community. And, and, you know, and I, and I hated this man because he was interrupting the things in my life that, that I was doing to survive and to cover up that disease of addiction. And, and it, it, just, it just kept going downhill from there. Um, you know, I moved away, lived in, in, in uh, Denver, Colorado, in Boulder, Colorado. I was down in Denver, Colorado one night uh, doing heroin and cocaine. And uh, during that time, I overdosed. And I was with my friends and, and my friends, and, and they drug me out of the apartment building, and they took me outside, and they tried to throw me in the dumpster because they didn't know what to do with me. And, you know, and, and, and I went back to Boulder after that, of getting out of the hospital, and within a half hour, I was doing the same drugs that I had done the day before. I, I just couldn't stop myself. And, you know, it, it, it just kept progressing until... Uh, January 5th, 2011, you know, my life changed forever. I walked into a treatment facility like I had done many times before. This time was different. This time something stuck. I was facing death. It was right there, and, and, and I had a choice. It was like I either, I either go this way or I die, and, and, and I truly knew that. I'd faced death, suicidal, um, different things like that, but this time was different, and... Uh, you know, so, so I started getting the benefits of recovery. You know, I, I uh, over seven years, um, you know, I was, I'm blessed with seven years of, of sobriety. You know, it was January 5th, 2011. You know, I have a home. I have a daughter. I have a wife. I have my dignity. I have all of the things in, to my, in my life that, that make a difference. And, you know, and I never thought I would get those things back. You know, I don't have to struggle minute by minute. And then, um, you know, over this time, I started doing different speaking events, and, and I worked at the state capitol building, and I took care of the capitol grounds. And, and one day, I was outside the capitol building, and I was in the skid steer, and I'm moving snow, and I look over, and there Dan was, and he was walking into the building. And I thought, man, I want to jump out, and I want to go run over to this guy, and I want to tell him sorry because things had changed in my life, but my legs wouldn't move. Tyler, it's a good thing, because if you'd have been come running at me, it wouldn't have been a good encounter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, and over that time, I got asked to speak at this uh, March into the Light. It was September, September 2015. And that morning was a beautiful morning. I was there with my, my wife and my kids. And, um, you know, and a man came on the microphone before me. And it was the man that I hated most of my adult life. So I was that man that he hated. Um, I was in attendance of that march into the late as a police officer, as the police chief of the Bismarck Police Department, but as a human being. Um, I wanted to show the recovery and the addiction community that law enforcement supports them. This isn't, it shouldn't be an us versus them. We support them. We have to enforce the law, but we support them. Um, it was unplanned, and they asked if I would just say a few words to the crowd. It was a chilly, dark morning. They asked if I'd say a few words, and... So all of a sudden, our first speaker will be Chief of Police, Bismarck Police Department, Dan Donlin. And when I heard that name, I wanted to run because I, I wasn't sure I was ready to, to face this. And, and, it, was, and it, was our, it was our time. And, you know, I remember looking back across the fence and, and I thought about running, but, you know, my wife would have been upset. <laughs> you know, so, so, so I stayed. And at that point, I had no clue that Tyler Alk was in this crowd. No clue. 
So I addressed the crowd, said thank you, and you know, expressed con uh, compassion and empathy for what they go through. Every day they fight this battle in recovery, every day. And I wanted to show that I supported them. When I was done speaking, I went to the back of the crowd, because that's where cops feel the safest, behind everybody, where we can see everybody. And uh, just kind of sit in the darkness and looking down, and then they announced the next speaker. And that's when I heard that name that I had not heard in a long time. Our next speaker is going to be Tyler Auk. And I went, huh? Uh, oh, this is going to be pretty interesting. What's he got to say? I introduced myself to the crowd, and, and I stated, Dan used to investigate me. Hi, Dan. Uh, <laughs> hi, Tyler. <laughs> and I was looking for a way to run out. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know where that came from, but it, 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 it came out. And after I finished my speech, I walked over to the man that I once feared and hated, and he greeted me with a big hug, and he told me that I'm proud of you. Um, I, and you know, I, I, inter I introduced Dan to my wife and kids, and, and we talked a little bit and, and gave him a little bit of my, my background. Yeah, he gave me a summary of kind of his uh, journey as he came through to recovery. Um, and he's, he was apologizing. He just kept apologizing for the havoc and the damage that he did in the community and the trouble that he was for the police department and all that. And I just told him, hey, you know, that, that's over. We all make mistakes. It's what we do with those and how we move on. I'm just very proud of you and congratulations. Um, and then we parted ways, and as I walked away, I tell you what, it's just going through my head, I cannot, not believe the change that this guy has made, and I was very happy for him. Later on, I'd thought about our, our meeting, um, so I sent Dan an email, and I, I basically said I was sorry again over and over, and, and we decided we were going to meet for coffee. So before I met Dan that morning, I got on the internet and I checked the statute of limitations because I, 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 thought, I thought this was a setup. <laughs> we work in mysterious ways, Tyler. <laughs> but the thing he didn't know is I had to check the warrant list to make sure we didn't have warrants for him. So we talked about our past and our future, our families, and how we can work together to help our community. I find, I find it very odd that I have the chief of police's Cell phone number. And I can't believe I have Tyler Elk's cell phone number. <laughs> Today I'm blessed with the broken gifts. I call them broken gifts um, because, you know, I, I, I'm grateful for all the broken places inside of me. Because in those places, the flowers grow. And, and they're beautiful places today because I'm in recovery. And, and, and today I can either let those things destroy me or I can stand up and I can help people. And I, and I can turn them into gifts. You know, it, it, the first time I ever said that I was raped out loud, I was at a treatment center and, and I thought, how, how, how can you say that? How, how can you say that? And, and, and the gift in it is not how it happened. It's because of the people that came up to me after I said it out loud. And they came to me and said, I've been raped. And it, and it happened to me. That's... That's why I call them my broken gifts, because there's beauty in them. And, you know, our, our, our story is more than just a former criminal and a cop. It's about breaking the stigma of addiction. Our story proves that change is possible. And no matter how far down the hole of addiction one goes, there is hope. So I, I'm a police officer who risks his life because because I care about everyone in our community. I fight for the people struggling from the disease of addiction because I have been there. Today, when I think of the name Dan Donlan, I think of honor, faith, forgiveness, integrity, strength, honesty, courage, family, and friendship. And today, I have a lot less hair than I have up there in that picture. <laughs> Today, when I think of the name Tyler Alk, and when I see him and hear about him, I think of a man of integrity, compassionate, forgiveness, credible, success, strength, courage, helper, family man, a dad, a good dad, a hero in the community that he's going to do miracles in, and most of all, my friend. <laughs>